After you have installed the .NET Core SDK, you should be able to use the .NET command line interface. To verify that, just open your favorite command line tool and type .NET dash dash info. And as you can see, this command returns basic information about the SDK that we have installed and the runtime and all of the older version of .NET Core SDK if they exist on your machine. Let's now execute the command .NET dash dash help to see what the CLI is capable of. And well, with the CLI we can do a bunch of things. First of all, you can create new .NET Core projects with the new commands. Then, if we have our sample project, we can compile the code and build it with the build command. And using the run command, we'll be able to see our project in action. We can also do other helpful stuff like restoring packages that we specify as external references to our project, or we can run the test for our solution. For now, let's just focus on creating a new project. I will clear the console and type the command .NET new dash dash help to see how we can create a new project. And the CLI listed all available templates that we can make use of. Let's go ahead and create a console application. To do that, we'll have to type in the .NET new and then the short name for given template. So in our case, it's just a console. And with the dash dash name parameter, where we specify the name for our project. So I would call it first project. Well, it looks like the .NET CLI has completed creating a project. Let's open the containing folder. And as you can see, in our folder project, we have the program CS and the first project that CS project file. For now, that's all that is needed for our project. We can start editing it. You can open this folder in any IDE of your choice, whether it's Atom, Visual Studio Code, or Rider. In my case, I want to open it in Visual Studio, since I'm used to it as most of the .NET developers, but to open it in Visual Studio, we need the .sln file. But fortunately, .NET Core supports that. Let's once again open the console in our project containing folder. And let's run the command .NET new sln with the name parameter. And also let's call it first project. This command has added the necessary .sln file. So let's now open it in Visual Studio. But there's something wrong because the solution explorer is empty, even though we created our console application and it is in the same folder. We'll have to add that project to the solution in order to see it in the solution explorer window. We can achieve that in two ways. Either we can run the command .NET SLN add and point to the csproj file, which is the first project.csproj, or do it directly in Visual Studio by right-clicking on the solution, then add existing project, and let's select the first project.csproj. In that way, now in Visual Studio, we are able to see our first project within our solution. Other way to create a solution with some project in Visual Studio is to click on the File, New Project, and then select the template that you want to create. So far, 
In our project, the only file is the program.cs and as you can see, it is quite small and simple. Using Visual Studio, you can build that project by right-clicking on the project and then the Build button. Also, we can achieve the same thing using the CLI by executing the .NET build commands. After building that project, we got a new bin folder that has showed up. Let's open it. And there's the debug folder inside. And then there's the .NET Core App folder. And finally, you can see the output of our compiled code. The first project, that DLL, is a, basically a compiled output from the code that we have written. To run that file, we'll also make use of the .NET CLI. So let's open the command prompt once again here. And let's type the following command. So it's .NET. And then the name of the DLL file. So it's first project.dll. We got the result in our console. There is also a .NET run command, which automates tasks like building and restoring external packages and then runs our project. For now, I will remove the bin folder. And here, I will execute the .NET run command. And as you can see, it basically did the same thing. So it, it built our project and then ran the DLL file. However, if you are using Visual Studio, running the solution is straightforward. Click on the Debug tab, and then start without debugging. You may also use the shortcut, which is Ctrl plus F5. And as you can see, Visual Studio has opened a debug console, and here's the output of our project. From now on, I will use the option to start the project from Visual Studio.